Hello everyone. In last lecture, you had viewed that we used uh, to uh, show or demonstrate to you how to read an image from a directory. We also resized that image and stored in our current directory with the name of t1.jpg. In today's lecture, we are going to proceed to grab an apple from that image, which is an our desired object that we want to uh, distinguish from the background. There are multiple ways to do that, but we will proceed the way in which we can learn more and more techniques that are used in our image processing because uh, to accomplish this task the main problem is to learn the new things that, and to learn the techniques that are required for image processing skills so let's get started first of all we will uh, reload the image and show what that image looks like if you are not uh, remembering the last lecture so we will display our image that we are uh, using this is an apple image we want to extract this apple from background but for now in this lecture we are going to convert this image into a grayscale image remember from the previous video that a color image if we display the information related to that color image it holds like 7,44,810 pixels bytes to store that image this is a lot of bytes lot of data to process we in every image processing or computer vision task most of the time in computer vision where we are going to extract some information from the image we force our uh, pr pre-processing we uh, design our pre-processing techniques which could be uh, ex extract most relevant features only it means to reduce the size of image as much as possible reduce the information presented in the image as much as possible it could be to reduce the resolution of the image it could be to convert the color image into a grayscale image even to convert a grayscale image into a binary image so we had introduced few terms if you are not familiar before which are a color image a grayscale image and a binary image so we are going to look into these terms as we proceed throughout our course so the these terms first of all the grayscale image maybe you had familiar with the monochrome images up or black and white images but uh, there are two things uh, to remember uh, the binary image and the grayscale image both images are of monochrome mean or have only two colors but the difference between the binary image and the grayscale image is that grayscale image also holds information about light intensity although the grayscale images don't have information about the colors but the grayscale images do have information about the light intensities so the grayscale images that we will see uh, let's uh, uh, convert this X image into a grayscale image. We name the uh, a variable with gray underscore X to hold the grayscaled image. The function which is used to convert and color image, which is an RGB image, into a grayscale image from the image processing toolbox of MATLAB. It's simply called RGB to gray okay rgb to gray and we provide an rgb image to this function and that function will convert that our relevant rgb image into a grayscale image as we hit the enter the gray image is created if we will see about the information of the grayscale image we will notice that the bytes used to hold that grayscale image is reduced a lot it is from 7 lakh to 2 lakh okay 
so how much information is reduced now we can process this image more fastly more efficiently more uh, with less computational complexities mean with le less power of computation that's that was the main purpose of converting an image into a lower dimensional or lower resolution or any other format which have less bytes to process on and less pixels to process on but without losing our core information that we want to extract from that image it doesn't mean that to you uh, shrink down the image into a 10 by 10 uh, pixels and uh, uh, there is no information that you want to extract from that picture so you have to be learn that skill with will which will uh, you learn from uh, with the passage of uh, time as you experience get experience in this field and try things with your own hand you will figure out how things works and what technique you need most at which stage okay so uh, now we will clear the command pro command window and see uh, how our grayscale image looks like right so to display an image im show function as you had already remembered uh, the image we are passing is grayscale image and here is how our grayscale image looks like here you can see the image is although black and white but holding the properties of light intensity so what a grayscale image is a grayscale image holds the information of the light intensity in the form of u int 8 variable it means a one byte variable which is unsigned integer of 8 bit u as you can see in the workspace u int 8 variable data type u int 8 data type is basically called unsigned mean it don't have the negative values uh, which means you can store value from 0 to 255 only so uh, the grayscale image e each pixel in grayscale image holds the value between 0 to 255 these are the intensities of the image 0 means a black, pure black pixel and 255 means a pure white pixel and in between lies the all light intensities resolutions so that is the way uh, to store an grayscale image if you hit grayscale x you will see this is a two dimensional matrix with rows and columns of or of, uh, 407 by 610 and uh, the variables holds in uh, values between uh, 0 to 255 as you can see here okay uh, let's clear this command window and uh, talk about one more thing which is grayscale image processing so the grayscale image processing involves such techniques which used grayscale image to process on the very famous technique which is used in this grayscale processing is the histograms what is an histogram basically an histogram is none other than a uh, representation of a in a, in a graph way or in a plotting way where you uh, display the property uh, the frequency of in light intensity in a graphical form um, let's suppose we want to display a single column from our grayscale image and we will say we want to um, get first row and all columns okay if you plot this it will look like something this okay this is not any histogram but a simple graph displaying all the pixels from 0 to almost 610 okay which is the length of columns in our image vice versa we can display a single row like this which will be from 0 to 407 
which is the row index if we invert the matrix in the previous form it will also look like this okay so the histogram will look like if we use the function mhist and pass a grayscale image it will display us all uh, the frequencies of uh, light intensities here you can see the image is more bright because the pixel most of the pixels are between almost 200 to 250 so the image lies in a with the with the a great light it holds more bright pixels than the dark pixels which are very few dark pixels so that is the kind of uh, information that we can get from a histogram a histogram looks like this that uh, 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 similar to uh, some bar chart if you are already familiar with the histogram concept or from the statistics subject if you had to read that subject this concept of image histogram is very similar the only difference is that here we display the information about the light intensities instead of the uh, some other property so here you are visualizing that all the all all the pixels are very bright okay if you try to equalize this image let's see what you will get here you see if you equalize an image with the histogram equalization algorithm the image is very much distorted it is because all the pixels now share at least a common try to share a common intensity information let's see how it looks like in a graphical way okay we name a variable gx2 and we'll see how it is now looks like we will pass gx2 to him uh, sorry im hist function and now you can see the histogram is equally distributed among all pixel values so this technique is basically used for con uh, contrast enhancement but I want to demonstrate this example with this Im image to show you that it is not always required to enhance your image there will be very few cases where you need to en enhance the contrast and sometime you don't if you are already satisfied with the lighting conditions of your image then you don't need to process that image with the histogram equalization techniques or any other con uh, contrast enhancement algorithms but if you are not satisfied with the lighting conditions uh, uh, of your image then you may use histogram equalization techniques to equalize your histogram in the upcoming lectures we will see how it will affect in our further processings as we will convert this grayscale image into a binary image so we will see how enhanced contrast images and histogram equalized images and non equalized images will affect our further processing steps in binarizing an image so till then stay tuned and goodbye.